Lord, everyone. I've been on 14 minutes already. Gosh. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. I don't own copyright privileges to this song that you're listening to right now. Uh -uh. I don't. And uh, by the way, good morning. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. It's October 31st. It's 2022. Let me tell you this. This is your traditional last day of October. They call it Halloween. It's, some people call it All Saints Day. Before this, lately there has been activity in the spirit realm. Before I get into that, it's always safe to pray, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I love you. Good morning to you. I hope you had a fine weekend. I did. By the way, I don't own copyright privileges to this song. It's by the uh, Gospel Plowboys. And from their, uh, uh, what would you call that? Some people have accents. I would say they're from West Virginia. Uh, because of the, the, uh, the way they sing and the twang and the the voices, I would say West Virginia. It might be, uh, it is bluegrass though. It's bluegrass and um, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. See, I have the pleasure of appreciating Black, white, Hispanic, Chinese. I mean, you teach me something. You put me in a in a in a church, a full gospel church. I don't care if you Korean, African, Jamaican. I have worship with. Um, I think they were Jamaican. They was in Florida. Some things I understood, some things I didn't, but there was, you could almost feel what the words, you know, the words that they were saying as they spoke about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning to you. It's October 31st, is 2022. It is also 923 in the morning. I might be on here a little while, y'all, so just turn me off. You know how to do it or, you know relocate you y'all are grown y'all don't have to listen to this but if i was you if i were you i listen i really would and i would pray for me <laughs> pray for me because i sure is gonna let you know something today because guess what ain't none of my words uh-uh ain't none of my words this is what came from the throne room, okay? And if I wasn't so sure that it was, that it wasn't from the throne room, I wouldn't tell you. Honest to God, that's craziness. That's dangerous. You know, you know when you're talking about self from self. But when you're talking about something, and you know when you're talking from the enemy too, you know. Uh-huh, there's some telltale signs. Maybe anger, maybe unforgiveness. You'll hear it out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios, Jesus a bendiga. I know a Spanish song from New York. And, and I'm going to do that before I, uh, before I go on. A la bore, a la bore. Alabore a mi señor, alabore, alabore, alabore a mi señor. Oh my goodness, this came back on me. It's songs you pick up. I was in a, a, a Pentecostal service in the Bronx, and that's what they sang, and there's more words to it. And I actually, I know it's a, they are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Alabori mi Señor. Praise God, y'all. Praise God. See, Lord gonna come back beside somebody else besides us black folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went, we've been through some horrible stuff. Mm-hmm. Lord gonna come back beside somebody besides some white folks too. They've been through some stuff. Mm-hmm. They fought one another. Civil War, remember? Or, uh, they kind of used us a little bit to help out, but Spanish-American War. Uh -uh. There's a lot of people have gone through things in their lifetimes. Troubles, tribulations, sorrows, uh, confusion, a lot of circumstances. And because of the grace of God, they made it through. Lately, you know, the weather and all of this, what's go, what went on with the uh, floods, what went on with uh, COVID, what went on before that with polio, all right. what went on with uh, what? Wall Street, finances, back in the 20s, the, uh, remember they, they, they had soup kitchens open, like they got them now. Back in the 60s, when people were on the corner nodding out like they doing now. History is repeating itself, children. Okay? History is repeating itself. We in, in, we in for a turkey fight. Anyway, but guess what? We've always won the victory through Jesus Christ. Always. And he don't like that joke. He don't like it. I'll raise my voice. I have to open up my mouth a little bit and let y'all hear. Maybe my, uh, what you call it, ain't on. Uh, you know, the sound and so forth. Oh, yeah, it's on 100%. But I got to raise my voice. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Thank you, Father God, for this glorious day. Lord, it may rain a bit. It's about 70% chance of rain, but that's all right. It rained yesterday. Lord, I thank you for the rain. I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Those leaves are falling from the trees when the rain hits each leaf, Lord. They fall. Lord, what a beautiful summer we've had. What a beautiful autumn we are having. And the winter, although it will be cold, Lord, help us to find beauty in it. Bind the spirit of fear as usual, Lord. Help us to watch as well as pray. Create in us clean hearts. Renew a right spirit. Lord, there are many of us who are living on the outside of you, wondering why we don't have the strength we need to overcome. Well, Jesus, that's why you called us, so that we could tell them how to overcome. It's written in Revelations, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. I shall be his God, and he shall be my son. Lord, it's plain and simple as the nose on my face. If we want to overcome, we've got to accept you. We've got to over accept you. There's no way to the Father except through the Son. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I shall be his God and he shall be my son. Lord, Give those who are out there and public figures, those who are were born for this time, Brittany, Lord, Kanye West, Lord, now calls itself Ye. God bless you, son. I like that name. Two letters. Brittany, Lord Jesus, Elon Musk, 
Lord Jesus, Trump been quiet, but that's okay. We praying for you, brother. Lord Jesus, bless even our president, Biden. Give him strength. Use him, Lord Jesus. Help him to remain strong. Lord, bless Pelosi's home and family. Help her through this. Lord, there are many of us going through stuff right now. Help us, Lord Jesus. You know how to help us. You already instituted a process. You already got it together years ago. Help us to understand it's your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, saints, I was listening to this song. Okay? I've had a series of events. I had some happenings. I have had happenings. If I'm lying, Lord, knock me down now. Knock me off this chair. Please. Oh, let me tell you something about the spiritual realm. I've had a, a, a African, I wanted, I like the African motif. I'm trying to do Africans throughout the house. You know, I haven't gotten into the African colors yet, but uh, African, a mask. If I could find a mask or something to put up on the wall, I'll put it up. I have one, and that's that zebra over yonder over here. It's up on the little column there. There's a, an African mask I bought from a small uh, little distributor we got here or somewhere. And uh, I thought it was okay. It looked cheap though, but I kept it up. I mean, I just kept it. I kept it up. I had it on the wall. Many times I tried to hang the picture, hang the, the mask up. It would fall off the wall. I thought, well, since I'm in Tennessee and there's uh, so many earthquakes and, you know, rumblings and people blowing up stuff, you know, I live next to uh, the, the, the TVA and Raccoon Mountain and all of that. And, and then you got the rumblings from um, when these cars out here, when they hit poles and, you know, things that happen on the expressway. Nonetheless, children, the mask wouldn't stay up on the wall. This morning, just before I got up, I heard wind blow and the mask was knocked off the wall again. And I said out loud. I quoted the scripture Isaiah 41 and 10. I could have gotten scared. You know, I thought about, should I be afraid? But no, I, I have, no, mm -mm. I will not fear. Fear not. In the name of Jesus, I will not fear. I'm going to tell you about something about that today. Like I said, I'm going to be on here a while. If y'all got some coffee to get, go get it. Because I got something to say and I'm going to say it. Uh, whatever you told me not to say, I ain't going to say it, but I'm going to say what I, I, I'm going to say. I done prayed about it. Listen, y'all. Thing knocked off the wall. I said, well, fear not. The Lord, my God, is with me. Okay? Fear not, for I am with thee. That's what it says. Isaiah 41 and 10. Be not dismayed, and I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with thee my right hand of righteousness. I didn't quote that whole scripture, but I had them seven words. Fear not, for I am with thee. And I rebuke the devil. But uh, is everything falling off your wall the devil? Not necessarily. Some told me, girl, you take that mask, put it in the garbage. I put it in the garbage. Then something told me later, that ain't good enough. 
I took it outside to the big one, the one going straight to the to the garbage truck. Mm -mm, I don't need that in the house. Mm -mm. Things don't just fly off your wall two and three times in a week. I mean, I stapled the dead one thing at one point to keep the thing from falling off the wall. But it continued to fall. Okay? Out the door. Out the door. Uh -huh. Remember, we're body, soul, and spirit. We are to walk in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, you'll be conscious of the spirit. My Kanye West, I want so much to talk to him. Uh, and uh, I must pray for him because he wants, he, you know, he's intelligent, man. He's intelligent. God is leading him. I believe that. I believe that. He's, he's very intelligent. He's a man for this time. He's a fearless soldier. He loves the Lord. My only hope and prayer is that he is remembering that you can't get to God except through access of the Son. That was the sacrifice. Okay. Kanye has to learn to use his spiritual weaponry. You don't find a spirit with your intellect. It's called vain philosophy, okay? The Bible speaks again against our, our vain philosophies. We don't know all or nothing except what God reveals to us through his words, okay? And his prophets, which won't steer away from his word. Uh, I went to Tiftonia and um, last night, and a gentleman, I think his first name was John, he was an, a well-seasoned saint of God. He spoke about the baptism, which some people claim that's how you get saved. It ain't so. Uh-uh. Being dunked in water don't rinse your sins away. The Bible says we have to repent. We repent. And that's how we are, are ushered into God's presence. Repentance. I mean to turn from this and not do it anymore. That's repentance. Okay? Not just sorry because you got caught with your cookie hand in the cookie jar. Repentance. We must repent. The word says so. Don't. Okay? Y'all know more than I do. Come on. Most of y'all. I'm just a pup. Okay? I'm just a puppy. I don't know nothing. Okay, Bible says, Romans, uh, uh, that you have to admit you a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sin. Okay, and believe that Jesus died for you and was buried and rose, okay, uh, from the dead. And through prayer, you invite Jesus into your heart to become your personal Savior. And he will tell you which way to go, what to do. Sit, spin, get up, sit down, open your mouth. Close your mouth. Uh -huh. Listen, that's my message for Kanye. Brittany, you're called. Okay? If God don't want you somewhere, that's why he made you so big and tall. You are somebody that the Lord, that people are looking at. I believe when you, and I'm not judging nobody, but I believe this, when you get out of that place, you're going to think differently about the Lord Jesus Christ, about 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, you ain't going to get out of there. We at war. Okay? There are wars and rumors of wars. Putin ain't playing. You right in the middle of a mess, girl, and you call. And God loves you. And if he didn't, if he didn't allow this circumstance to come like this, nobody would know you too much. I wouldn't know you was the tallest person and, and very good at basketball. I wouldn't know. I know there was a women's team and I liked them. But you are called, Sugar Pie. You call, Brittany. You call. You call according to a purpose. You may as well start calling on him. Because he called you. Putin didn't call you. Biden didn't call you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we get stuck in messes that we can't get out of. Ain't nobody in on earth can get us out. Except God. And y'all who prayed for me and mine, thank you. Keep praying for him. The devil is a liar and his mother-in-law too. Anyway, I went down to, to Tip Tony and snuck me a tambourine in the house. I didn't know that uh, uh, somebody wasn't going to be there, Pastor Brandon. He was out. He wasn't feeling well. Laura was there. Woman of faith, baby. Laura, Brandon, she was in the midst, baby, right there, right there. In the name of the trusting in the most high God, representing the family, her husband and the family, keeping the flock together by her presence and her prayers. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, child, I had a weekend. I had a weekend. Here you go. Excuse me, please. My babies, one of my babies is calling. Baby, I will call you back afterwards. Yes, I will. I love you. I will call you back afterwards. Okay? I have a feeling I know who it is. It's probably the baby. The baby's 41. Anyways. Does it look like the baby? It ain't the baby. But somebody else. Well, anyway, whoever you are. I can't talk to you now, darling. Uh, oh, Paul. Paul, I have to call you back. Let me just type that in. See you Thursday. Yes. A. Amen. And. A. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I always got to say thank you. Okay, y'all. This is the deal. I went to a church last night. Name is Tiftonia Baptist. I was told years ago never to bring a tambourine in the house. I didn't know the guy, Pastor Brandon, wasn't going to be there, but I brought mine in the house. I wanted to play it, and I, that's how I worship. Uh, I was told that um, it would distract people from. Oh, my goodness. Paul? Can I? Yes. Can I call Daniel? you? Yes, honey. Can I call you back? Yeah. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. I'll call you right back soon. 
Give me about 30 minutes. Yeah. Gotcha. Bye-bye. I have, speaking of Paul, that's who we're going to talk about today. All right. Paul is um, a good client friend of mine. All right. And uh, let me talk to you. Uh, anyway, going back to Tony, I was told not to bring my tambourine and because it would distract people. Um, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing my little tambourine. I've been playing the tambourine since I was a teenager. And um, I ain't going to stop for nobody. The Lord told me to bring the tambourine. I know it was the Lord because I usually, but I'm tired of being scared of people. Okay, I'm tired of being scared of events. If 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 I'm thrown out for playing the tambourine, then so be it. Okay, but I have not looked into the uh, scriptures yet, which says that the tambourine played would harm anyone if it discourages you. My playing of the tambourine, um, I guess I'm in the wrong place. All right. Anyway, I went there and the gentleman spoke about uh, things that I knew nothing about. The North Star. He spoke about the Southern uh, Stars, how mariners in ships were led to go where they needed to go hallelujah by the north star the north star is always visible the north star stays in one place of the uh the hemisphere or one place of the stratosphere and does not move all of the other stars around it moves that's because the earth you know something he just explained it and it was so or inspiring anyway that north star guides ships that southern star is also points to you know it just it's just awesome um thank you jesus he also talked about you know being baptized so forth but anyway um there is a song okay and I wanted to get that uh, tambourine thing in there first. Um, Pastor Brandon and family, I love you. And y'all love me. And I see the need for me to keep loving you. And that comes from on high. In... Green, bluegrass gospel has a song and uh, the Southerners sing it. Quite a few people have sang about the ship of Zion, the old ship of Zion. It's called, I was standing on the, uh, it was, the verses go like this. I was standing on the banks of the river looking out over life's troubled sea. When I saw an old ship that was sailing, is that the old ship of Zion I see? The author says, its hull was bent and battered. From the storms of life I could see. Waves were rough, but that old ship was sailing. Is that the old ship of Zion I see? At the stern of the ship was the captain. The stern, that's the back part. I could hear as he called out my name, get on board, it's the old ship of Zion. It will never pass this way again. As I stepped on board, I'll be leaving all my troubles and trials behind. I'll be safe with Jesus, the captain, sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Now, saints, listen. Some people uh, would think that this is a, a, uh, one, a, a funeral dirge. You know, one of them funeral songs. It ain't. It is not. Let me tell you why. Because you know who's going to make it through this storm of life? It's the church. Don't, don't, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. 
You think your money gonna take you through? You think your house gonna last long and your car and your good looks and your, your husband or your wife gonna last forever? They gonna take you through this life? You think your children gonna stick by your side forever and, and, and you just gonna be just fine? Okay. If you old enough and you can take care of yourself, you still going to need assistance. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the internet, for those who can't get out. Uh, my client is one of them that listens to the uh, uh, church on the internet because he can't get out. It's hard for him to get out. And uh, that's what I do. I help those who are not ready and do not wish to enter into a nursing home or rest home. They want to remain at home in their own uh, surroundings and they usually can survive. Um, they can usually survive very well with some assistance. That's where our agency comes in and they send out uh, many, like myself, some young, some older. And uh, that's my call. My calling is to serve, serve. I heard a beautiful sermon about serving. Oh my God, Pastor Adams. Holy Spirit used him to convict us. Now listen, I'm going over the time you expect it. So just turn me off, okay? But right now, I'm going to tell you about a few things. Something to help you survive. Okay? Bible, full Bible believing churches, you're going to survive. If you stay, uh, if you stay in the ship, you will survive. There's some churches that haven't learned uh, leaders, church, church leaders that are learning as they go, learning God from different aspects, learning He's a healer, learning He's a prayer answering God, learning that even black people can love. White people, white people are learning. They could love black people. Church, the church, in the church though, in the church. Mm -hmm. See, cause perilous times are not only coming, but they're here. Another thing, don't play with Halloween. You don't play with the devil, he real. A series of events happened, and I was so caught off guard. Uh, I knew when I, I read into your hearing and mine, Isaiah 41 and 10, I knew I'd be tested. Uh-huh. Well, somehow my check got messed up on Friday. And as much as I fought fear, I had to get on my knees because I was only able to go but so far with bills. I, I, I paid them on time. I mean, I've been paying religiously. And my checks came. You know, I work this week, I get paid. Work next week, I get paid. And everything was fine. Big old wave came by the ship, this little ship right here. And I had to read that scripture. I said, now I'm not going to fear. Then the devil said, you, yeah, look, it's Friday. You ain't got the money. Look what happened. You only got 30 some dollars left. What you going to do? Well, my mind said, buy some gas. I ain't even gonna pay no tithes. 
good job. Holy Spirit, after I prayed, got hold of me and told me, yeah, you give. You give. Give. Lord, also let me see something about me. Don't be afraid. Because after I gave a certain amount, I gave half of it to the church. I got to the pump where I was going to use the other half, the gas. I had 58 cents in my account. I searched in some boxes and some old pocketbooks because like the week before I found some money. I was able to put some gas in the car. You see, because uh, I've been paying bills, not buying any food, but paying bills. I bought some, uh, I had some food in the cabinet. Gary, before he went home to be with the Lord, made sure that I had food in that pantry. But uh, for some reason, and the reason I don't want to cook in the summer, the food piled up for it not only months, but years, since 2019. And there was a little mouse problem that I had not been aware of. So the mouse was chewing on my stuff. So he met me that day, fat as a pig, and I'm losing weight. Not because of him, but because I just... You know, summer was here. I ain't had no appetite. I just running, paying bills, running, running, paying bills, trying to pay tithes, giving, giving, doing, giving, doing, giving, doing, keeping gas in the car. Well, I think a long story short, I had made an appointment for, uh, it was a uh, locklear clear, uh, breast cancer uh, awareness week. And, uh, I made an appointment for a mammography. And uh, I thank God that that came back clear. And um, just thankful. But I wasn't going to take the mammography because I began, I began to become dismayed on Friday. I said, I have no money. I will shut down. Oh, the, I called the, the job and, and, and asked them, you know, I work such and such. And I, my check doesn't reflect what I have worked. You know, oh, we can't do anything for you until Monday. So I said, I'll shut down. I'm not going anywhere until Monday. Be not dismayed. I told you I'd have to eat them words. Mm -hmm, told you. You know what dismay is? When you get discouraged, when you lose courage. You lose your courage. I lost my courage. 58 cents at the gas pump in my card till Monday. And I wanted to play football with my church, all of it. I wanted to go to service on Sunday with North Georgia. You know, I mean, I had plans. It's a nice day for football, too. It's real nice. And I looked at Pastor Adams, and I, you know, I, I rebuked the flesh, you know. But, dang, some of you big, tall people, God know what he did that for. Y'all think y'all can't make it? Y'all was built for the journey. You're built for the journey. Some of y'all ain't big and tall. Y'all stubby like like uh, David in the Bible. He wasn't no giant man. Nobody mentioned it. But uh, uh, Pastor Joshua, he ruddy like David. Built for the journey. Pastor Brandon, ruddy. Not, not bad to look up, but ruddy. But I looked at Pastor Al, I said, dang that guy. Well, he got youth on his side. Then God using him. He hadn't been through something. Which, I mean, just, you know what I mean? You need some strength. 
to lead. You need strength. You can't be no wimp. And then again, there's some tiny women. Thank you, darling. There's some 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 women who is short as is cute as a button. God is no respect of person. He will use who he will. Children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to tell you that. Uh, by the way, I'm 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 dealing, you know, I was dealing with something. You know, fear and pride hang out together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? So it came in my mind, go ask Pastor Adams for 20 bucks. Well, maybe ask him for 10. You you want to go to the, what you call it? You got about that much gas. You can get mammography. Maybe you go over to somebody's house and borrow some money so you can get to the football game so you don't have to ask past or not. They was not home. Okay? Who I, uh, who I talked to, he ain't had. So I went over to uh, 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 Jersey Pipe Nation, Olivet Nation. <laughs> Young bloods. Oh, man. Played football. But something told me when Pastor get here, I know it was the Holy Spirit. I know I'm led by the Spirit because I asked God to lead me. I asked him to lead me. I pray these thumbs right here, this thumb here, this is how I do it. You pray for those who are close to you, which are your neighbors, your friends, family members here. You pray God to guide you. Pray for leaders. Pray for weak people. People who are sick and afflicted, those in, in nursing homes or even in foster care, then uh, and make sure you pray. When you pray, the, the hand finger right there, that strong finger right there, that's your leaders. Then the last pinky right here, that's where you pray for yourself. Okay? So I got them prayers in, but I asked past, I, I said, something, something told me, Holy Spirit told me, ask him for $10, 20 hours. Sure, he got 10, 20 hours. I made it to, uh, the football game on fumes. No, it wasn't fumes yet. It was like teeny weeny and I did. I don't like traveling like that. I like to have a little gas in the car because I don't like being stuck on the road and nowhere. Anyway, I asked him, he said, okay, I'll make sure you get it before you leave. I, I just, that, my pride had to come down. I needed since, you know, your needs are met at all of it. And I know I have been trying my best to give. Please help me out. I didn't want to borrow nothing from the church. I went to the pastor. Okay? I said, I'll see you on Monday morning. Anyway, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pat, for the assistance. Thank you. I didn't want to tell you that I was embarrassed. But I put that fear aside. Fear and pride and embarrassment, the blood of Jesus. Here it is. I is who I is. And I was, my mind, my coffer was very low. Nonetheless, that still did not uh, correct the food supply. Had a good message at OBC. I was going to. Just, oh, thank you, Jesus. Then I went over to uh, North Georgia. And uh, that dang, Pastor uh, uh, Joshua, talking about washing, the washing. The same thing Pastor Adam was talking about, the washing. That, that Jesus told one of them apostles, because Peter said, no, I don't want you to wash me up, past, uh, uh, Jesus. Jesus said, no, I ain't going to give you a bath. You don't need a bath. You've been washed. You believe God. You, you, you know, just your feet. I want to serve. 
And I want you to remember that, to serve. So I came under conviction with that sermon, to serve. Because uh, sometimes you serve and you say, geez, my Savior, will I ever be finished serving? I'm serving on the job. I've served all my life with my family. I've served my husband's served, served on the job, served off the job, served neighbors, served friends, I've served. Still, I could do some more service. And I want the heart to be right in serving. Hallelujah. Because the devil throw in there, oh, you're just a slave. Oh, you was a slave back in the day, and you're still a slave. You're a black slave. That's all you are. Ain't that nasty? Ain't that nasty to say? That's a nasty thing to say. But he told me I, you know. You just, you just repeating history. Slavery. Whose report will you believe? I believe that Jesus came to save and to serve, and I want to be like him. So I'm thankful for a job that will allow me to serve. The gentleman that called, I serve him. He's a Jewish Christian. I serve him. I serve quite a few. Couple I'm serving. 92 and 96, they've decided they would like to, because they cannot afford 24-hour care, and their children are grown, they've decided they want to go into a, um, a uh, assisted care facility. Hallelujah. Very you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, they're not going to live longer. Oh, please, please, please stop it. Don't let nobody tell you how long you're going to live. Okay, you got to give up the ghost. You tired of fighting? You real tired of fighting? I mean, bone tired, soul tired. You get that tired? God will take you in. Your soul needs resting. One time I told him that, and I had a, I had a, a dream of heaven. Mm -hmm, my soul gets tired. Revive my soul again. Mm -hmm. Here's a balm in Gilead. So I prayed. Anyway, thank God I went over to uh, North Georgia Worship Center and uh, heard a beautiful just wonderful sermon, the same thing I heard over at all of it. We worship the Lord in beauty and, and in truth. I mean, we heard the word. And uh, I uh, came up in my mind, hey, you go to ch that church and they're giving out all that food. And you sitting up here and ain't got nothing. Because I had fried my last three potatoes. See, these are days I've been spoiled, y'all. I don't know what it is. I like shrimp. I like certain parts of chicken. and I don't like red meat. I don't like that stuck in my body. You know, it's something that's... <sighs> but I like uh, tilapia. And I like uh, swan, swan, something... Oh, it's catfish. I like that. I used to, you know, mother used to keep us on, um, she'd buy a lot of uh, that other fish, but uh, I even like sardines. I like salmon. You know, I like some hamburger. You know, I like beans. But um, my meat had gone completely. I had no meat in the freezer, just a bunch of vegetables. And um, uh, Pastor Joshua was, was busy, but I asked uh, Pastor's wife, Caitlin, to help me. 
uh, and she found some meats in the freezer. She found, you know, they have a box outside the church. But I'm telling you this because there'll be days and times that we will be tested. I was tested. Are you ashamed to tell someone you're in need? I used to be. I used to have a lot of pride. That's what got me fired from a job, my pride. Okay? Trust me, pride goeth before fall. And if you older people are out there, because I don't believe in this, you know, oh, get it, Medicare, you get that free food. Ain't nothing free. You know, if I got to borrow against my next check, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. How are you doing? This was a test. Am I going to get discouraged, not show up to my appointment, not go play football? And I played football and I enjoyed it. I ain't do much of nothing, but I was on the field. I wanted to do something, but my legs wouldn't um, do what my brain told them to do. I just was not fast enough. They are young people. And you must come to the conclusion you are not young. And that won't stop me if God give me strength from playing next year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the game itself was just a bunch of fun. Yeah, we got together. I even seen uh, uh, Kevin play. I tried to get the organist to play. He would, I'm just here to observe, you know, certain ones, but Jesus, did we get together? I seen everybody's moves. <laughs> Them young people, Pastor ain't bad. Pastor Adams, he ain't bad. What y'all, we are, well, what we need to do, which is I'm in my sanctified imagination, hey, all of it need to play North Georgia worship. Hey, let's, let's, let's enjoy this, this journey. Hey, Hey, North Georgia Worship Center need to play football with Tony. Just this tag football, you know, uh, flag football. Put this thing around your waist and you got this little tags that hang off. And if they could catch that tag, that, that whole belt should come off your waist and that's the end of the play. I was past the ball just one time and that was enough for, I tried to block. I tried to block past him. He's a little bit too big to block. Okay? But he faked it like he fell. Like I hit him somewhere in illegal motion and all that. But it was so much fun. Then after that, I got into the um, the bounce house with the children. I got in with, to the bounce house. And the children said, uh, what are you doing in here? How old are you? I said, I'm six plus six, and uh, meaning I was 12 years old, and somebody said, yeah, she's 60. <laughs> I love kids. <laughs> anyway, let me get back. So anyway, I, I thank God for the church. You know why? Because that's how you're going to make it through. I'm serious. I'm serious. The scripture says that uh, in Acts, okay, it says that uh, in the book of Acts, the Bible talks about um, Peter talking to the congregation on the day of Pentecost. He says with many, and this is New International Version, it says with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this untoward generation. They call it corrupt in the New International. Uh, uh, King James says untoward. And then verse four, it says, those who accept this message were baptized and were there were about 3,000 were added uh, to the church, okay? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship to breaking of bread and to prayer, 
Okay? That's how you're going to make it. When your church is throwing, not only church on Sunday, but when they're having a dinner, get there for prayer. When they're having communion, get there and eat the wafer. Eat the bread, the cracker, whatever, How don't drink the wine. That's how you're going to make it. That's how God made it to be. Okay? Church ain't going to exist in glory. Okay? There'll be a body of Christ. But the church house ain't going to be there. Church ain't going to, there ain't going to be no church in glory. Ain't going to be no pastors in glory. Okay? This is a journey for the earth. Okay, also says all believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone who had need. They gave me. I had a need. Not that I'm going to sit down on them and keep collecting. That ain't how it go. Mm -mm. That ain't how it go. The church is not the welfare office. But you have a need. If you got a decent church, a loving church, you got a good pastor. Do you? Or are you too shamed? Some of y'all got to buy medication. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have to buy medication. Thank you, Jesus. I do need some vitamins. I buy vitamins. But I'm not on medication from the doctor. And I can bounce in the bounce house. And I can make a flip. And I'm almost 70. Okay. Not everybody can do that. Nobody, Not everybody can play uh, flag football with their pastor. And the saints. And see them young people run around and laugh. And watch the, the referee, God bless her, watch her cheat. <laughs> I love y'all. Listen, honest to goodness. You want to hear the scripture for the day? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. In the book of Acts, 27 book of Acts. Okay? You can read it out of... The New International Version, the English Standard Version, King James Version, okay? But it is the 44th, uh, it is the 44th verse of Scripture, 2744. It says, the rest were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land in safety. Land is heaven. We're going to go to the promised land via the old ship of Zion, the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. If you're outside of the church and struggling, you don't have to. Okay? You don't have to. Now, remember, too, I'm going to tell you this. I was paying, I still was paying tithes and running short. It was a test of my faith. I'm still, I ain't care how much I had. I still gave to church. I'm still going to give to church. It's a test of your faith. I bind fear, and I mean what I say. I will not fear. When I woke up this morning and and and, and thing fell off the wall and I heard a gust of wind in the house. What what, what, what why am I supposed to be scared? No. Uh-uh. I rebuke you, fear. I shall not fear. Thou shalt not fear. That's command from the word. I sh thou shalt not fear. You're supposed to give to your congregation. You're supposed to attend. You're supposed to be busy. Okay? I am um, currently involved in the following. It's just an example of how to serve. I'm on the hospital hospitality committee with Donna Adams. Okay? 
um, uh, Wednesday night, I do attend Bible study with St. Glenda and St. Tina. All right? I'm going to attend my Bible study. I do attend intercessory uh, prayer with Sister, I think her last name is Hicks. I'm not sure. But it's intercessory, Monday night. God willing, I'll get there tonight and we will intercede. Okay. Um, I do enjoy, which I'm not part of, the OBC praise team. Used to be one of the choir members. Okay. Uh, through my employment, I'm trying to serve. Um, every now and then, and more now than, than anything, I will fellowship at Tiftonia. And I am going to give as much as I can. As much as I have, I'll give. My wallet has been empty at times. I will give. See, because I get paid back more than I give. Talking about somebody blessed. Talking about somebody blessed. I'm blessed. I ain't got to go to the penitentiary to visit no child. I ain't got to uh, 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 take a child out of the, the, the psych ward and bring him and take care of him. I ain't got to visit the psych ward. I'm blessed. I could breathe in and out. I don't have no heart murmur. I ain't got no kidney problems. I ain't got no naughty uh, uh, abusing me. I don't have to uh, uh, trade sex for dollars. What you doing? I ain't got to hate you or gossip about you. I ain't got to. I ain't worried about you. I ain't got to worry of putting you, put, keeping you in my mind. I pray for you. I ain't got to worry about my enemies. They're my under my feet. Hallelujah. I don't have these troubles. I'm blessed. That's what happened when you stay in the ship. Okay. Paul said, he told them, those, those, uh, and, and two people, I didn't know two people uh, were with Paul on his journey to Rome after they had arrested him. They were always wanting to arrest Paul because Paul was accused of heresy. He came against the government. Okay, he came with this uh, 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 Christ theory, this, this, this belief in Jesus. And uh, uh, they always wanted to put him in jail. Okay, Luke, and Aristarchus accompanied Paul on his journey, Dr. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts. Okay? Paul was in this ship. He was uh, traveling Asia, you know, from Asia. And there are 48 countries in, in Asia. This, this big old ship was going down the coast, stopping in at ports, trading, giving, mails, this, that, and the other. Big time ship. Ship gets into a, a problem. It's winter time. Nobody was listening to Paul. Uh, of course, you know, the guy had to make the money and get the, the shipment in. And they had sailors. They had 248 people on board that ship. 248 people. And uh, that, that it was a, a rough journey. It was a rough journey. They were afraid. It, it got so bad um, 
that they were about to shipwreck. And uh, on their journey, there was, uh, uh, it got so bad there. There's a word. Um, it's called when the sun, they can't, you couldn't see the sun or the moon. It was that bad. Sometimes our trials get so bad, we cannot see the light of day. But let me tell you what Paul did, okay? He told him, throw, throw, you know, stay in the ship. Whatever you do, stay in the ship. His, uh, the sailors was getting ready to, to hoist down the, the, the rowboat, get in it. Paul caught him, told him, you ain't gonna be saved till you stay, unless you stay in the ship. They stayed in the ship. This happened night and day, children. Nights of rough sails. Nights and days where there's no sunshine. They lost their way even. But they listened to Paul and stayed in the ship. Even the, the, the very captain and the gentleman who the centurion who was assigned to Paul, they had lost hope because this, this storm was bad. But Paul dreamed and heard God tell him that no one would be lost and that he would get a chance to go to Rome and speak and tell of his reason for his faith but they had to stay in the ship. So they did, finally they could see a little bit of the shore and, and they let down some, at the stern of the ship, the very back, they let down some anchors, four anchors. And that kept the ship from getting broken up by the, the, this, the glaciers and not glacier, glaciers ice, by the little uh, peaks and rocks that came up, rose from the, uh, from the sea. And they knew that uh, if they didn't tie the boat up, they trying everything just to stay alive, just to stay alive. They even had to throw off uh, uh, some of the supplies, the things they were carrying up the, uh, the, the coast. They would carry, it was a cargo ship, made money. In order to save lives, they had to throw things off board. Sometimes we gotta throw things off board in this storm. Things like pride, things like doubt, unbelief, Things like uh, 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 anger, things like judging one another. I thank God for the ship. I thank God for fellowship. I thank God for the ship of Zion. Okay, in that ship, one of the ships I I I I, I get to on a Thursday night, celebrate recovery. That's part of the ship. Help me to stay in my right mind. Help me to keep from, from going off the deep end or, or, or over doing something. There are people out there overeating because they worry to death. Fear, fear. There's some people you can't tell nothing to about the church. They don't want no part of it, but yet they sitting up eating themselves to death. Worried about this, worried about that. Church hurt you? Forgive them. Ask God to heal your body, heal your mind. Heal me, Lord, heal me. Please, heal me. But I'm going to make it. I'm a survivor. Hello. Okay. I'm getting a little bit too uh, worldly. They threw off the anchors and then in the morning, they waited till morning and decided 
to save themselves. So they was going to let down the rowboat. Paul warns them, don't let the rowboats down, stay in the ship. So then they, um, they cut the ropes and uh, the boat falls into the sea. Paul assures the people, 270, I think 278, six people, that they would not die. And he broke bread with them. That's why it's important. Eat with your people. Eat with the saints. Eat. And you get a chance. Every time, this is baby, we's on a journey. We on some rough seas now. Eat. Tiptonia got something coming up. Eat with them. Veterans over at North Georgia Worship got something going. Eat with them. Went to the football tea, uh, game Sunday. They had Frankfurters. My Frankfurter was something I wanted to digest quickly. <laughs> I looked inside, it was crinkly, because it was after you after they blow up, you know, they but I put mustard and, and mayonnaise in, and woofed that Frank down after that football game and enjoyed myself. Got me some water out of the car and got in that bouncy house with them kids and laughed and bounced. And my system did, digested that, Frank. Okay, I'm 69 years old. I, I mm-hmm, yeah, I digest that, Frank, and I did. And I don't have digestive problems. I just wanted to get that, Frank, down into out of my, you know, out of my mouth. Anyway, so uh, Paul breaks bread with them. Okay. In the morning, while they was nearing the bay and the beach, the ship breaks up. The hinder part of the ship breaks up. Julius, who is the top man governing the ship, he's the captain, um, thought about killing all the prisoners. But he decides, nah. Let everybody who could swim, swim to shore. And those of you who can't swim, float on pieces of the ship. And they were told that they would survive. Let me tell you this, and I, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for being on so long, because I got to tell you this. Call me crazy. You want to survive this? You best get, go get you somewhere in a ship. You can go to Mount Zion, uh, Salem, Meth uh, Salem, I don't, uh, no name, no name, no chill. Get in the ship. Get in a ship, a full gospel ship and fellowship. Okay? That's how you're going to survive. That's how you're going to survive. I love you. And uh, thank God for you. I'm going to cook up something for the rest of the week. So I have a little bit of something for lunch. Every day. Remember to eat fruit if you get apples or whatever. See, what's happening is that I'm not eating the food that I'm used to. I'm spoiled. But I'm trusting God. And my soul doth magnify his name because he is mighty good to me. My name is Mother Gail Trailer. And this is just in case. I'm just passing through. <laughs>